All right, so I am on a trip to go see Joe Dion, who is of Pumbo Plugs. Uh, he's the guy that I work with and create a lot of plugs and different fishing lures with. And we're gonna go and talk to him and see, you know, how he makes his plugs and how uh, all of that's like how the process that he does to like design lures and all of that fun stuff. I'm really excited. I've not done this. I haven't actually seen his uh, like garage that he makes his plugs out of yet. So I'm super excited to go and visit him and, and see those, uh, see his uh, garage that he makes all the plugs out of and everything like that. So I'm really excited for that. It's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, uh, I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm waiting currently for a ferry at the moment. So that is what I am doing right now. Just waiting for the ferry to get across. He lives in uh, upstate New York, so yeah. I am, um, it's a little bit of a drive. We're gonna convince him to uh, move somewhere closer to the coast so I don't have to drive this far to see him. Um, all right, I'll see you guys once we get to uh, his house. So we have, we created these, are the different models of the plug, different sizes that we can do. We're gonna go with the largest size of the metal lip that we tested. So I've never made a plug before, so. No? This is gonna be. Well, this is cheating, because this is like, it's sort of already made. Yeah. So I don't know G-code. I mean, I don't know how to program G-code properly. Yeah. So I did it, it cheated using this little measuring device yeah. with a pair of calipers. So normally what I do is I make a plug and I drill the lip and I drill the back tail and I, I just use this to hold the plug. Yeah. And then what this does is I turn this on and I measure the diameter at every um, half inch or quarter inch interval. What I do, glue this in. <laughs> oh, oh, there you go. Uh, the wood will expand and contract with moisture it's warm and wet out so it's not really not sliding, sliding perfect as well as i wanted it to but it's all right we'll be able to rectify that i'll also put wax on it so it would slide better thicker It's, oh. it's still in there pretty good. <laughs> Wood, right? It's constantly. It's what makes it so difficult to make good plugs. It is. It's hard to. Uh, that's amazing. I'm really amazed at that because this was just running so smooth. <laughs> Just have a little persuasion here. Yeah. And actually, we almost don't even need this. So I got a little pin right there. The pin's at zero. Yeah. Right. So you basically you plug this into, you plug all the diameters, and length and whatnot. I just of the do plug. the diameters. Yeah, exactly. And then you put it into the lathe, and the lathe will automatically. Yeah. What I do is I plug in my diameters. I measure them across the the length. Mm -hmm. And then it calculates, and then I select the certain fields that I want, and then once I do that, it changes it into G-code for me. Because it is funny, because right now, it's like there's such a, a fad to have... Huge? Huge. 
metal lips where in granted they work i mean if you think about it a uh, adult bunker is a big ass fish a nine inch fish is nothing for a big striper to swallow yeah exactly we use 15 inch mackerel yeah i mean they swallow the whole thing whole exactly so even though like nine inches is a lot bigger than what we are currently using it's gonna be absolutely nothing for the striped bass mm -hmm. and you have a lip a lip that's gonna be big enough for this gonna work right there yeah that looks about right it's a number like a number three danny <laughs> yeah so first step is to we do everything out measure this all out i'm gonna clear this out we are going to call this uh what are we gonna call sbh swimmer nine inches sbh swimmer nine there it is and now we're gonna say we really need to know we need to go to an 11 inch stock length we're gonna do a couple nose level length. Stock size is going to be, I, I probably need to do two inches. Tail length and then max plug diameter. Max plug diameter is what we have to calculate right now. So where's the fattest part of this plug? And that calculates the radius and all, I've got all my offsets. And then I come over here and I start with the nose. It's impressive. I knew it was very well thought out, but this is definitely better plan More. than a lot of plug builders. You think so? Yeah, I think so. Maybe I'm naive. Well, there's a lot of great guys doing good stuff out there for sure. So I measure this. This is the most time consuming. Part of the whole process. But then once you have this plugged in, you're probably good to go. I'm done. I save it all as a program. And, and if you're really good, you you can I can plug this into a CAD CAM design. So CAD is computer aided design. Mm -hmm. And you could do the design in that. And then CAM is computer aided manufacturing. Yeah. Which turns it into G-code. And then doesn't it give you a model of it? It gives you a model. Yeah. And I have some of them done. I have not been successful enough. This worked, so I don't really use the cam software to create the proper G code. Copy all that code into my notepad. And then from the notepad, see it's got the name of it up here. Save as uh, SBH Swimmer 9. Save. Unplug this. All right, you ready? This is where the magic happens? Well, we gotta do a couple more steps. So the cool thing is I bought this, didn't know anything about it. Actually learned how to wire it up myself, wired this all up myself to 220. Yeah. Learned a little bit about G-code, whatever we need to do. Made a little, see I don't like buying stuff, so I made my own box with this yeah. window. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to upload this. I mean, there's so many different little parts to, to the whole thing. You have to be so good at a lot of things to be able to do this. You have to be good at designing the plug, all the woodworking, Stuff you have to do and all the technology that's involved in that. It's pretty impressive stuff. You like it? Yeah, I mean, I, the setup here is amazing. It's pretty cool. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this window off and I'm gonna go to automatic, pick what we just did right here. And I'm going, this is all set up to be zero. We know we need a little bit longer. We're gonna do a dry run, right? Okay. So what that does is this. So far, so good. This one's gonna go in. This one's gonna go in. It's gonna cut the max diameter. Yeah. All the way down. I'm just making sure I don't get a crash. And it should stop right there. That goes out, that goes in. Now it's making the final profile. And down to the nose, goes out. Continues to spin and I'm sanding at this point. Sanding, sanding, and it's done. Nice. Okay. So that should work. What do we need to do next? You want a sinking or a floating? Ooh. Or? I think whatever, it, fairly neutrally buoyant. Fairly neutrally buoyant. If that makes sense. <laughs> Otherwise, you're probably going to have to increase the lip size on it if it's floating. Just going to do it. <laughs> so I'm not going to plane it because of that. It's a test plug. It's a test plug. We're going to make it out of poplar. And we said we wanted 11. We're going to set this to 11. Here we go.
done with the jig, which didn't work anyway. Now I'm going to find the center. All I'm going to do is just, this is a 45, just an X on each end. Yep. Okay. That's done. Now this is pretty soft hardwood. Yep. So I don't need to drill a pile of hole, but I'm just going to punch in with a steel punch. Okay. It's actually a metal working punch. But yep. That's it. Right in the center on each end. Now we're ready to go. So we start with that. Yeah. We're going to make sure that this is plenty. That's got plenty, so I'm going to finish cranking down this so it doesn't move. Put this end in. Move one dimple. Put this in the other dimple. Yep. <laughs> That's all you got to do. That's all I got to do. Boom. Cover it up. Turn this up. I'm on automatic. Pretty cool. That's awesome. Isn't that cool? That's so cool. Okay, so there's one. Yeah. Now I'm not going to do the rest of them because we may want to tweak it, right? Yeah. Now we have to figure out. That's that the uh, that's my air, air compressor. So we're going to mark this up there. We're going to mark, we want this to be nine, right? Yep. Uh, there's the tweak. This is actually going to be a little bit shorter than nine. You can see I could have programmed it to come a little bit further ahead. Yeah. But call that there. We'll cut it off right here. Yep. Yeah. Pick where you want the eye. <laughs> You're gonna have to put weights in the belly too. I trust I would you. Say one and a half is gonna be fine for the eye, and then for the belly, you almost need two belly hooks on this. But you hate doing that. Right? Yeah. Um. I mean, could you put one big hook like more towards the head? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. You're going to have a tail hook, you'll have this hook. Yeah, and now we have got all this that's empty. But. Yeah. And then we also have to mark where are we going to put in weights. Do you so mark we'll, the we'll, taper? Um, we can. I, I mean, it's iron on. We can. Um, I'm going to. I don't. You don't, no, I don't. don't. Okay, I, yeah, then I wouldn't. So they need the belly weights to just get it to make sure it doesn't roll out. <laughs> So it doesn't roll out of its, of just its like wobble, that. and um, it's just going to keep the hooks underneath it, right? Yeah. We could put them all up front, and that would aid in nose forward. Yeah, which is which we what right. we want, yeah. We could also put them in the back. You can put them on both sides of, of the belly hook, and you'd get more of a, right? Yeah. More of a level sink like that. Yeah. But for a plug this size, I'm probably going to do four of these things. Yeah. Um, so I'm thinking... Two in the front, two in the back, or we could do three in the front. Another one here. Let me do three. I even have the option of doing that. I don't normally do lead, but for prototypes, I'm not too worried about because I can take them out of the prototype later on. But we could do a, a, a fairly heavy lead. So now we got the eye, weight, weight, belly hook. So now we drill, and I've got the belly hook in here. Now, I don't have a jig for this, but mm -hmm. what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set it so I know it's going to go through the center hole and not out the back side. I'll line that up like that. We'll say we're going to mark this. We're going to mark this right on the belly here. Okay, and then I'll eyeball it center like that. Yep. That's it. <laughs> Where your hook's gonna be. Take this out, and we're probably gonna want a half inch eye on that. A little bit bigger than <coughs> a half inch eye right here. So now I'm gonna come back to my eye. It won't interfere with the uh, weights. Yep. So line that up on the eye, but I, now you see why I have the, the squares on here, right? Yeah. There's 90 degrees.
and I got my two eyes. Yeah. And they're the exact same distance from there. Now we want the <coughs> belly hooks. Yeah. And that's another. This is why you do them in batches. This is all set up, right? Yep. Belly hooks. I have the right size with a stop on it, so I don't have to to measure. Yep. Uh, the depth. And it's gonna go where we said it was gonna go, and. So now we're all drilled, well, except for the through hole. Next step is my long board here. I'll set that to zero so it's square. Now I normally have a jig because it's this is almost almost square anyway. It'll be it'll be all right. I'll just support it a little bit. It's pretty awesome. So far, so good. It's a great size. You like that? Yeah. Such a big size. <laughs> they, don't, they don't care. Nope. I just find it, you know, a lot of people find it hard to cast. Oh, definitely. Or something like that. But. Yeah, you got to have a big, big rod and bigger than I normally use to throw something like that. But let's see if I can get something that's going to work. So I haven't made any jigs up for this, right? Yep. And I'm gonna again if I were to do this, you know, I'd add another another standoff here where this would and this gets it to be the right at a 90 degree angle. Yeah. Uh this brace in here. Drop this down a little bit. This should pretty much center it. And Make sure the lip fits in there. Big lip we chose. So that fits. Fits. It actually comes out right at the bottom. Yep. So now what we do is we're going to center that. Mark where the hole goes. Yep. Because that hole is not straight through the middle, right? No. Good jig for everything. This just helps center. Center the. Uh, just makes a little dimple. That's pretty nice. And if I want, just to aid in the drilling, I'll make a little dimple. I have to be careful of this though. If I press down and it snaps, it might split the split the lip. Now we come over here. This is this is what has confounded many many people with making plugs. How to drill the through hole. Now when I first started this, 40% failure rate. Wow. That's now I have less than 1%. So the trick is, I've got a point here. Yep. That point. I use this little tool to calibrate it. I'll put this in, lock that down loosely, but that point is right below the center of this arbor, right? This drill press. Yeah. Now I know that I'm drilling from this point here directly to that point. And it doesn't matter what angle I have the plug on, if I put it over that point, I'm gonna be drilling towards each in a straight line towards each other. Put this in here. This is pretty long, so I need to... And I'm not going to get much depth, but that's okay. And I usually bring this back over just as a support to steady it.
You can see I just broke through the first weight hole. Yeah. That's why I wanted to use these discs instead. Yeah. Uh, I have more on order. This one wouldn't split. So now that's centered it over that, and now I'm drilling directly towards that other hole. Yeah. Nice and centered. Perfect. Take my long screw, my long drill here. Usually wax it up a little bit, helps. That's a, very, that's a pretty long plug, and that method works. That works really perfect. well. It takes a little, you know, it takes a little bit to get used to. Yeah. You can't force it. Problem is, see the drill bit. If you just drill from one side, that drill bit will want to walk with the grain. Yeah. And you come out crooked. Um, so start from each side. Use a nice sharp drill bit, and that's also a brad point bit. That's a different okay. tip than this. Yeah. That's got a little tip that will tend to wander less when I do the pilot holes. Yeah. Um, okay. So that's that. We're good to go. I'll just blow this out. At this point, I just want to make sure that hole's good before I put more labor into this. Yep. So I type a wire and I just pass the wire through so it comes all the way out the end and then I'll look and it's relatively centered over the belly hook hole. So yeah, this passes, this would pass. That the passed the test? Passed the test. Sweet. Now we gotta do the flat head. Now I would jig this up normally. What I'm gonna do, that's what these little pins are here for. Yeah. They're offsets. Mm -hmm. And you can see, I'm just looking at that, right? Off the side. Yeah. If I were to do it here, I'd probably take off too much all the way to the beginning. So I'm going to hold it even further out and we'll start with this. Mm -hmm. And I'm eyeballing this again. We can evaluate that if that's too far back. Yeah. But that's looks pretty good right now. I mean we'll see how it swims. So the next step is is I'll sand this up. Yeah. And then I seal it. Yeah. Let's now we don't have to seal it. We can actually Oh I'm sorry, I gotta I gotta put weights cement in. the weights in too. So my tungsten weights. Now that first one's pretty low. So if the plug rides well with the weights being where they are, yeah. then, it, then it rides well. You want to put them there, and I'll put this in just to make sure I have a, a safe hole. Yeah. Um, if not, my preference would be to move it back where it's a little bit thicker, and I'm not going to drill in to hit that center hole, right? I figure I'll build up my workbench nice and flat here with Bondo. Find a new spot each day. Yeah. We don't need much, but do this, and then I'll just get these ready. That, put it on the hardener. Mix it up. You watch other people's YouTube videos. Of how they do different things. Yeah, and you pick up things here and here there. It's the same thing with fishing. I always say, like, you can. everyone does the same stuff differently. Yeah. So you can learn from everyone because... You can. Whatever works best for you, right? Yeah, exactly. There's no one way to do it. I don't use Bondo to really... To, sometimes I fill in a defect, but I don't like to do that. So there's my Bondo. So I'm going to put that down to dry and then I... Just move this over my workbench and I'll sand it down later. That's funny. Come down for this is a fiberglass reinforced bondo. Yeah. And then I can test it on here. For some reason I love the smell of bondo. It's <laughs> really bad for me. Yeah, probably. The wood I don't smells know if awesome. It makes me nostalgic for coming out here and making lures or what the deal is. That was a pretty good cut, wasn't it? 
Head worse. Been shot. Really? Yeah. With what caliber? I've been shot with pellets. Or okay. Duck hunting. I've been shot with pellet guns. Twenty two. Was been shot with high power rifles. That's the just by accident. Nobody pretending to do it. I've heard the bullets go through. So we're gonna let that set up. Set up. Yeah. In the meantime, we really should seal it. So yeah, we can seal it. I think what we could do is make a couple different plugs. Yeah. And then test them all, you know, at once. Seal them all up and test them. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed part one to this little series here. This is going to be really sick because uh, I, this is the first time I went and saw Joe's setup. And what I really took away from this and I thought that was really cool is all of these small plug builders, you know, they're doing everything manually by scratch with their hands so all i really wanted to say to end out this video and so you guys are excited for the next video is uh there's more plugs that we're going to be designing and building and you're going to see from scratch how that process is but also uh i i did want to say i do want to say uh you guys should go and support your local plug builders because they put so much effort into creating these new plugs and such a special product for everyone and it's you know it's a lot of work and they do it because it's a passion and you can see that in this video so i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please leave a like and subscribe and i'll see you in part two